Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, I will provide a brief overview on Amazon Time Stream. So what is Amazon Time Stream? Amazon Time Stream is a fast, scalable, highly available, serverless, encrypted, fully managed time series database that makes it easy for you to store and analyze trillions of time series data points per day. So in very simple words, it's just like any other database, right? It basically helps you to store and analyze data. But if anybody asks you, this is the simplest definition of what Amazon Time Stream is all about, ensure to mention that the scalable, highly available, serverless, encrypted, and most importantly, fully managed. That essentially tells them that they do not have to do anything is 100% managed by AWS. So since it's just like any other database, what is so special about TimeStream? TimeStream as a service basically simplifies the complex process of data lifecycle management. And how does it do that? It does that by offering a memory store for recent data and a magnetic store for historical data. And most importantly, it automates the transfer of data from your memory store to your magnetic store, depending upon your configuration. So you can actually have some configuration policies and as a user, you can configure them. And depending upon what your configurations are, it will basically automate the transfer of data from your memory store to your magnetic store. Now, while it does that, let's say as a user, since it's a database, of course, you would like to query that data. It certainly has a built-in query engine, but most importantly, while you're querying the data, it will transparently access and combine the data across these storage tiers. That is across your memory store, as well as the magnetic store. And in that case, it, the overall experience becomes completely seamless to the user because you don't have to specify the data location. Now, it also helps you to quickly analyze this time series data using SQL. And of course, it has some built-in functions for smoothing, approximation, and interpolation. At the same time, it also supports some advanced functions like aggregation, Windows functions, and complex data types, such as arrays and rows. Now you can certainly send data to Amazon TimeStream using certain data collection services like IoT Core or Kinesis or Telegraph or simply using AWS SDK. Now remember, it's a database, you're sending data to it. Of course, you would like to visualize the data as well. And you can certainly do that using tools like QuickSight, Grafna, or maybe any other business intelligence tool that you would like to use via JDBC. You can also use TimeStream with SageMaker for machine learning purposes. So hopefully this was a good overview and you kind of understood what this service is all about. So let us continue further ahead. Here are some key concepts that I would like to cover for time stream. I'm going to cover them at a very high level. I will create a separate video wherein we will deep dive into these concepts. But right now, let us just understand what these concepts are. So remember, Amazon time stream is a database. So at a top level, of course, it's a database. So you can create your database right up over there. Right? It's a database service. So you have a database right up at the top. Under that, you have your tables, right? So database is a top level container for tables, correct? So just like any other databases, you might have worked with a SQL or Oracle, you go inside, you create a database. And in that database, you have your tables. In a table, a table by itself is a container for a set of related time series. Now, what is a time series? So time series is a sequence of one or more data points or records. Now, remember that this is a time series database. That means time is 
is the is the key over here is the essence over here right so hence your time series are records that are recorded over a interval of time so basically if in very simple words is a set of records or a set of data points recorded over an interval of time and the last sentence that i'm saying is recorded over a interval of time or an interval of time that is key over here because everything in a time series database is associated with time right now what is a record a record in itself is a single data point in a time series right so hopefully this should be very straightforward you have database at the top level in that you have a table in that you have your series and in that you have a single record so it's as simple as that it's just like any other uh, database that you may have right in typical database you have a database your table your records like a set of records maybe you can say that, call it as a record set or a data set and then you have a single record inside here you have time series and the reason why it's called as time series because it's a set of records that is recorded over an interval of time now remember time is the essence over here that means every record that you have has a time stamp and what does this time stamp indicate this particular time stamp indicates when a measure was collected for a given record so that means for every record there are certain uh, measures or values that you are collecting right so for example in this record that you have over here the measure that you have is cpu and that you are collecting over this time stamp so different time periods and this is the actual value of that measure this is the measure value but along with measure what you have is dimension so dimension is nothing else but a set of attributes there could be more than one dimensions as well so you could have a set of dimensions so nothing they are nothing else but attributes that describe the metadata of time series for example over here you have uh, two dimensions that is host and region so uh, region is us west and host is server 1 and for that you are basically collecting values or what you're measuring is the cpu utilization and this is the actual value of that cpu utilization and finally you have the measure right so which is nothing else but the actual value being measured by the record so again over here just to come back and look at this you have your two dimensions right region and host you have your measure name which is cpu this is the value of that and this is the time stamp associated of course i will create a separate video as i said we will deep dive but hopefully this was clear it is pretty simple pretty straightforward now let us see how does amazon time stream work so this is one of the simplest you can say how, you know architectures or uh, depictions of amazon time stream right this is for a devops application so essentially what you have over here is the source data right you have different data collection agents that are pumping data into amazon time stream of course once the data is available over here you can utilize different tools to visualize analyze and process this particular time series data that is available now let's say if you had an iot application right how would you do that so the reference url that i've mentioned at the bottom right so here it is this is for an iot application again you have your source data you have iot core you have kinesis pumping in data into time stream and finally again you have different tools that you can use to visualize analyze and process this time series data and let's say if you had an analytics application again source data you have msk kinesis pumping in data into time stream and again you have your visualization tools so in very simple words you could have multiple sources pumping data into amazon time stream and again this could be a high volume uh, data this could be a low volume data depending upon you know, what your application is mm -hmm. but once you have your data in time stream then you can use different tools to visualize analyze and process this data so hopefully this was pretty straightforward
Let us now look at the benefits of this particular service. So I believe the benefits are pretty obvious. Of course, it's serverless and with auto scaling, it has built in analytic functions, right? It has simplified data access with data lifecycle management. Remember the memory store and the magnetic store and the auto transfer of data between these stores depending upon your configuration policies, right? And finally, data encryption, both at rest and in transit. What are some of the use cases for this? Of course, the first use case is any kind of monitoring matrix. If you want to capture monitoring matrix, of course, over a period of time to improve the performance and availability of your applications, right? If you want to do any kind of for telemetry, definitely you can use this particular service. Again, let's say if you're tracking user interaction with your application over a period of time, you can certainly use time stream. And finally, to store and analyze any IoT sensor data, time stream can, can again be a good candidate for those kind of applications as well. Finally, let's look at pricing. I have the link open here, right? For pricing, remember right now, this is the current pricing when I'm recording this video. This pricing may not be valid when you watch the video. So always go to this particular link, right? And look for the latest and greatest pricing. It does change over a period of time and it is different for different regions. So let us first see what is available as part of the free tier. So for free tier, you have 50 GB of data ingestion that is free, 100 GB of magnetic tier storage and 750 GB per hour of memory tier storage. And again, 750 GB for query usage during the first month, one month free trial. Once your free trial and your free trial is over, depending on your region, right, for your rights, for 1 million right of 1 KB in size, it's going to, they are going to charge you 50 cents. For your queries per GB that is scanned, they are going to charge you 1 cent. For your memory store per GB stored per hour, it is 0 0.36, right? And for your magnetic store per GB stored per month, it is again 0 0.3 cents. And below we have some pricing examples. I would certainly recommend that you review through these examples, especially if you're using these services, as that will help you to better estimate the cost for your application. So I hope that this particular overview was helpful. Do post your comments and let me know. This is it from me today, and I will see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.